Hi, it's Katrina. There has been a lot going on on tiny islands all over the world that we are just starting to discover. From little known shipwrecks to former leper colonies, here are eight of the world's most mysterious islands. Number eight, Socotra Island. Socotra Island is part of a remote archipelago governed by Yemen, located in the Indian Ocean between Africa and Arabia. One third of its wildlife is unique and exists nowhere else on the planet. There are hundreds of endemic plant species, including dragon's blood trees that look like flying saucers, which bleed when you cut them open. There's also Adenium socotranum, a tree which resembles an elephant's leg topped with pink flowers. The archipelago is home to 11 bird species found nowhere else on the planet, including the Socotra starling, the Socotra grosbeak, and the Socotra sunbird. Bats are the only native mammal there. Socotra has numerous caves, including Hawk Cave, which houses centuries of rock art by people we know nothing about. The island played an important role in ancient maritime trade as a stopping point for Indian, Ethiopian, and Southern Arabian traders, who left inscriptions on the cave's wall as early as the 1st century AD. In 2008, most of Socotra became a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Its unique ecosystem is highly vulnerable to pollution, invasive species, rapid development, and climate change. A DNA study of Socotra's inhabitants revealed unique genetic markers that don't appear in any other human DNA. Through this type of research, scientists hope to learn more about the migration of the first modern humans out of Africa. Until 1999, there was no modern airport or paved roads on Socotra. Modern technologies such as the internet and television, as well as increased tourism, brought Socotra and the outside world into greater contact than ever before. Reaching Socotra is difficult, however, due primarily to the ongoing civil war in Yemen, keeping the island both geographically and politically isolated. Number 7. Diego Garcia Diego Garcia is a 17-square-mile coral atoll in the Indian Ocean, 1,000 miles away from the nearest continent. It's part of the Chagos Islands archipelago. The first settlers were African slaves who were forcefully relocated and made to work on coconut plantations. Indentured laborers from India arrived following emancipation, and a unique blended society called the Ilois formed. In the late 1960s, the British evicted 1,500 people from the Chagos Islands and leased Diego Garcia to the U.S. Air Force. The families were relocated primarily to Mauritius and the Seychelles and were given no resettlement assistance. They've struggled with poverty ever since. Chagosians sued for their right to return to the islands in the late 1990s. Today, the territory remains entangled in a tug of war. On one side are the U.S. and British governments, who oppose returning Diego Garcia to the Ilois. On the other side is the British High Court, which ruled in 2000 that Britain obtained the island illegally and continues to uphold this ruling. The United Nations and activists who believe the Ilois should be allowed to resettle, including the Pope, who recently urged Britain to relinquish the territory. Diego Garcia is strategically important to the U.S. military as a refueling point and has been used for launching attacks in several conflicts since the Gulf War. Little else is known about it. The top secret base is home to somewhere between 3 and 5,000 military personnel and civilian contractors. No journalists have ever visited, and military spouses are not allowed to live there. The UN recently served Britain with a formal six-month eviction notice. The future of Diego Garcia and whether Britain and the U.S. comply with the order remains to be seen. Number 6. Spinalonga The Greek island of Spinalonga was Europe's last active leper colony. Located just off the coast of Crete, the small, now uninhabited island was once home to nearly 400 residents who were banished there after having their property and assets seized and their citizenship revoked. Spinalonga originally served as a fortress during the Venetian Empire. Then, from 1715 until the early 1900s, it was occupied by the Ottoman Turks. It became a leper colony in 1903 when the disease was considered incurable and carried a negative stigma that socially alienated its sufferers. At its peak, Spinalonga had a main street consisting of shops as well as a cafe and a small school. The island's doctor only visited if someone was suffering from something other than leprosy. And even though a cure for the disease was discovered in the 1940s, the colony remained operational until 1957. 
When the Greek government closed Spinalonga, they did so as quietly as possible, destroying all records of it and attempting to remove any trace that it ever existed. The authorities had a change of heart when they realized Spinalonga was a tourist attraction, however. Parts of the island have been restored and it's now the second most visited tourist site in Crete. Efforts are being made to turn it into a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 5. Henderson Island Henderson Island is part of the isolated Pitcairn Archipelago in the South Pacific, about halfway between New Zealand and Chile. It's uninhabited, but sadly it has the world's highest recorded density of plastic pollution. Every day, roughly 3,500 pieces of garbage wash up on shore of this otherwise beautiful island, which is home to four endemic land bird species and 10 plants. The trash ends up on Henderson Island after getting caught in a counterclockwise ocean current called the South Pacific Gyre, which acts like a conveyor belt, continuously adding to the 38 million pieces of rubbish that have collected on the shore so far. Henderson Island was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988, and its surrounding waters make up one of the world's largest marine reserves. Given the island's protected status and remoteness, it serves as a startling reminder that virtually no place on Earth remains untouched by pollution. Number 4. Tromelin Island Tromelin Island is a very small island located about 280 miles east of Madagascar in the western Indian Ocean. It's part of the Scattered Islands, or Ile Eparse, a series of French-owned islands that compile the 5th district of the French Southern and Antarctic Lands, or TAF. The French discovered Tromelin Island in 1722, but it was left mostly undisturbed until 1761, when the French slave ship Lutile wrecked at its northern reef. Initially, there were hundreds of survivors who worked together to dig a well and build a shelter. Then, a white crew left on a makeshift boat made from salvage remains of the Lutile, promising to return for the remaining 60 surviving slaves they left on the island. Nobody returned to the island until 15 years later, when the French ship La Dauphine arrived in 1776. Miraculously, seven of the original survivors, all women, were still alive, along with an eight-month-old infant. They had survived on the flat island, which was full of low-lying vegetation, by digging small shelters and fortifying them with rocks and eating crabs and turtles that came there to nest. Nobody visited Tromelin Island again until 1856, and in 1954, the French established a weather station there. Despite its limited human presence, the island suffered. By the time the weather station was implemented, the eight different birds that once bred on the island had dwindled down to just two species. Additionally, the island was overcome with invasive rodents, such as mice and Norway rats. In 2005, the Norway rats were successfully eradicated from the island. Since then, much of its vegetation and wildlife species have recovered, including the return of seabirds such as the brown-footed booby. Today, the human presence on Tromlin Island is limited to scientific research and its ecosystem continues to thrive. The remains of the castaway shelters are still there as an eerie reminder of how 60 resilient souls were once abandoned and forced to find a way to survive. Number 3. Mystery Island to the locals of Vanuatu, the small, uninhabited Mystery Island is called Inuig. To the rest of us, it is just known as Mystery Island. Most of the 0.6 square mile island's area is occupied by a grassy landing strip, which is used twice weekly as an airport for the nearby island of Anetu. According to locals, this seemingly uneventful island is haunted at night by their ancestors, and people are reluctant to go there after dark for this reason. During the 19th century, the widespread fear of the supernatural made Mystery Island a safe place for Europeans, who believed the indigenous people of the adjacent mainland were violent cannibals. The indigenous people were not, in fact, vicious cannibals. Research shows that they enjoyed a sophisticated and high-quality lifestyle before the Europeans came along. Unfortunately, however, their population was all but decimated by conquest and disease, and the only knowledge of their traditions was passed down verbally, as there are no written records of their history. Therefore, much of the past culture of the people of Vanuatu is just as much of a mystery as Mystery Island itself. The wildlife around Mystery Island is also in the process of still being discovered by scientists. Mystery Island was visited by Queen Elizabeth in 1974. While there, she enjoyed a private barbecue. Oddly, however, most locals do not remember the famed visit at all, simply adding to the mystery of Mystery Island. Number 2. Navassa Most people have never heard of Navassa, arguably the strangest island in the Caribbean. Barely bigger than Central Park in New York City, it's located between Cuba and Haiti and belongs to the United States. Navassa was first visited in 1504 by crewmen sent by Columbus. They drank contaminated water and died shortly after arriving. 
Then in 1857, an American sea captain claimed the island for the United States. For the next 30 years, it was mined for its extensive deposits of guano, which was used to make gunpowder and fertilizer. In 1889, after mining over 1 million tons of guano by hand, the African-American workers at Navassa rose up and killed five supervisors, and the ownership of the island became the subject of a contentious, ongoing debate that at one point reached the U.S. Supreme Court. Navassa was abandoned in 1898 after the Spanish-American War. Today, Navassa's animal inhabitants consist mostly of feral dogs, lizards, and occasionally researchers. The ownership of the island is still disputed between Haiti, who claims Navassa in its constitution, and the U.S., who designated the island a national wildlife refuge in 1999. In 2012, scientists discovered a rich coral ecosystem in Navassa's surrounding reefs, consisting of various endangered coral species. Regardless of who Navassa truly belongs to, it's definitely a good thing that its environment is being protected. Number 1. Fraser Island Australia's Fraser Island is the world's largest sand island, stretching over 76.4 miles long and 13.7 miles at its widest point. It's best known for its wide array of colorful beaches, boasting 72 different colors, mostly shades of red and yellow. Besides the vibrant sands, Fraser Island is also known for its thick rainforests, clear freshwater lakes, and unique wildlife. Stepping onto the island for the first time feels otherworldly, according to Lonely Planet. Visitors to Fraser Island can stop at one of its several stores or cathedrals before embarking upon the rugged interior journey. There are no paved roads, and traveling around the island in anything other than a durable four-wheel drive vehicle is discouraged. There are campsites throughout the island, but once you leave the coastal area, you're willingly foregoing virtually all modern conveniences. Some campgrounds even require that you carry a portable toilet due to their lack of facilities. The experience is rugged but well worth it for the island's breathtaking scenery and for the chance to catch a glimpse of the famed dingo or the remains of a shipwreck. Fraser Island's traditional name is Kagari, which means paradise. This fitting name was given to the island by the original inhabitants, the indigenous Buchula people. Nobody knows for sure how long the Buchula people have lived on Fraser Island, but evidence suggests that they first arrived between 5,500 and 20,000 years ago. Unfortunately, but not surprisingly, the arrival of Europeans resulted in the drastic reduction of the aboriginal population, and in 1904, most of the remaining indigenous people were forcibly relocated to the Australian mainland. There are up to 500 indigenous archaeological sites located throughout Fraser Island that we just haven't discovered yet. Today, only 194 people live on the island, which became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1992. Thanks for watching! Have you ever visited any of these islands? Would you like to? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!